Welcome back, my friends. Have you guys had an awesome morning so far? Oh, good. I'm so glad. Are you guys ready to keep learning with me? Great. Let's do it. Do you remember what we're talking about this week? Yesterday, we started talking about something new, a specific author who has some books about bugs. Do you remember the author's name? Eric Carl. Very good. Can you say it with me? Ready? Eric Carl. And yesterday we read his book called The Very Lonely Firefly. And in that book, did the firefly start out happy or sad? You're right. He was sad. Why was he sad? Because he didn't have a friend. So what did he do? Yes, that's right. He went looking for a friend. But can you remind me, did he find a friend right away? No, he didn't. He was looking for other lights because he thought they were going to be fireflies. But were all the lights that he found fireflies? No. Can you remember one other light that he saw? Oh, good. I hear a lot of good answers. I remember that he saw some fireworks and he thought those were fireflies. But were those the fireflies? No, they were fireworks. Now remind me, at the end of the book, does he find a friend? You're right. He doesn't find just one friend. He found a lot of friends. He found so many fireflies lighting up the night sky. So at the end of the book, was he happy or sad? You're right. At the end of the book, he was happy because he found friends and he wasn't lonely anymore. So at the beginning of the book, he was sad. Show me your best sad face. Hmm. And at the end of the book, he was happy. Show me your best happy face. Great job, friends. Well, today we're going to read another book by Eric Carl called The Very Busy Spider. Now, in this book, we're going to meet a lot of new characters, the animals in the book, and we are going to use our craft from earlier to help us keep track of what animals we see in the story. So while we read this story, you're going to keep your craft in front of you. And when the reader of the story says a new animal or a new thing, you're going to move your slider to put the web over it. So when we start, there's nothing. But the first thing the spider does, uh-oh, I dropped our book, is land on a fence post. So we're going to put the fence post into the slider. And when the reader says the next thing, the horse, we're going to slide our slider over to the horse until the horse's turn is done, and we'll move it over to the cow. Do you see how we're going to do that? Awesome, and we're going to do that through the whole story, so we'll get to go through every animal. Oh, I got mine stuck a little bit. We'll get to go through every animal until we make it all the way to the end of the story. And we are on the last animal friend, the owl. And when the reader says the end, we get to move our slider all the way over. There's nothing in there. So make sure you have your slider ready to go so we can start this story. Do you have your slider ready to go? Thumbs up if you have it. Awesome. Let's listen to the story together. The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carl. Early one morning, the wind blew a spider across the field. A thin, silky thread trailed from her body. The spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky thread. Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go for a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Moo! Moo! said the cow. 
Mm, want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Bah! Bah! bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Ma, ma, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Oink, oink, grunted the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Woof! Woof! Barked the dog. <laughs> Want to chase a cat? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Meow! Meow! Cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Quack! Quack! Called the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Crowed the rooster. Want to catch a pesty fly? And the spider caught the fly in her web. Just like that! Who? Who? asked the owl. Who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. The end. What did you think of that story, friends? I liked it too. So in the story, The Very Busy Spider, we saw a spider building a what? A spider web, you're right. And there were a lot of animals that came along the way to ask the spider to do something different. But did the spider stop doing her work? No, she kept on making her spider web. And at the end of the story, her spider web was useful to all the animal friends because it caught the fly that was buzzing around them the whole time, right? Yeah. So next time we see a spider web outside, we need to be very careful with it. Do you want to know why? Well, because just like the spider from our book, the spiders in our world that are outside on the earth like to spin webs. Those are their homes and they use their webs to catch flies and mosquitoes and other bugs that might bother other people. So when we mess up a spider's web, we're messing up all their hard work to build their home. Now, I know this morning we talked about being a good friend. And if your friend was building a tower of blocks and they were working very, very hard and you knocked it over, is that being a good friend? No, that's not being a very good friend. So the same way we wouldn't want to knock over a friend's hard work, we shouldn't knock over the spider's hard work either. Because, you know, God created spiders special just like he created us special. And he created them to create webs. And when we knock over their webs, their hard work, how do you think that makes the spider feel? Sad, yeah. I would feel sad if somebody messed up the web I was working on all day long. And then the spider's going to have to start over. And it won't be able to catch flies until the web is done. So next time we see a spider web outside in nature, we're going to make sure to leave it alone. Sound good? Awesome. I know the spiders will be so happy that you leave their webs alone. So thank you for helping the spiders. Well, friends, that's all we have for today. So before we sing our goodbye song, I wanted to let you know something super fun we're doing tomorrow. Do you want to know what it is? 
Okay, we're going to do Zoom show and tell. So tomorrow, hopefully, I'll get to see all of your beautiful smiling faces on Zoom and we'll get to do show and tell together. Now this week, our show and tell is about the color red. So I need you to do something very important right now. Are you ready? Okay, now you have a special job. Go around your house and find one thing that is the color red and keep it safe and bring it to our Zoom show and tell tomorrow so you can tell everybody what red thing you found in your house. Can you do that for me? Great, all right, go find something red after this. Sound good? Awesome, let's sing our goodbye song together. Ready, let's tap our knees. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Bye bye, butterfly. See you again next time. See you again next time. Good job, friends. Okay, go find something red. I'll see you tomorrow.